Hello and welcome. In today's video, you will learn how to use Netro. Remember, Netro is an interface that UCINet has in order to draw networks. So, in this video, you will learn three things. You will learn how to use Netro for visualizing networks. You will also learn how to include attribute data to make your networks more visually informative. And last, you will learn how to save your network images. Let us go back to UCI Net. Remember, to access NetDraw, we can just simply click on the symbol corresponding to NetDraw, and NetDraw will open. We're going to keep on using the same Paget file that we used in the previous video and also the file that was generated with the network centralities. So let's start by first visualizing the Paget file. To visualize that network, we can click on File, Open, and select UCI Net Dataset and select Network because first we want to open the network file. Then we select the file that we want to open. Remember, we already set up our path, so UCI Net and Netro know exactly where to go. And then we select the network file that we want to visualize. That is the Paget page. And this is all we have to indicate to UCI Net for now. We just simply click and this is the, how the network of these Florentine families from the early 1400s look like. We see all the families, we see who's connected with whom. But one thing that is in interesting, I guess, and or puzzling is that Netro would always consider networks as being directed for some odd reason. But this network is not really directed. So Perhaps the very first step is to get rid of these arrows, so we don't want to have this direction. In order to do that, we can simply go to the Properties tab, and then we go to Nodes, and then we go to I mean, we go to Lines, and then we go to Arrowheads and then we simply click on visible. And then we want the aerial heads off. And then just click OK. And now our network is no longer shown as directed. Now remember I told you there are two different networks in this data set, a marriage network and a business network. Here on the right hand side of the NetDraw window, you can see that Netra identifies two types of relations, or actually the two networks. One is a marriage network, and the other one is a business network. So if we unclick the marriage network, we see all the ties are gone. And then if we click on the business network, you can see how that network looks. Also, what you can do is simply select both, and you can have an overlap of both the marriage and business network. Let's just stick to the marriage network for now. Now, you can click on notes, and the notes basically tell you the different actors that belong to the network. And in the very bottom, UCI Net, or actually NetRoll, tells you how many nodes exist in this network, and that is 16. If we go to the Relations tab, it also reports to you that there exist 40 ties within this network. So it already gives you some information about this very specific Now, what if we want to say a little bit more through an image? So right now, visually, we can see who's connected with whom. Uh, we can visualize who's, who has a, the highest degree of centrality, etc. We can see, for example, the Gucci family is uh, completely disconnected from the entire Florentine network, etc. But what if we want the nodes not to be squares but circles or what if we want the size of the node to correspond to the degree centrality 
where nodes with a higher degrees in quality would be represented by bigger nodes? Or what if we want to indicate the shape according to between centrality or whatsoever? If we want to characterize our network based on additional information about the nodes, then we have to make use of something called attributes. And attributes are the characteristics of our data. These attributes can be, for example, age, can be uh, country of residence, can be gender, can be education level, etc. You can also use network centrality measures as attribute measures, basically information that describe the nodes. For this example, we're going to be using the centrality measures that you computed in the earlier video as attributes, right? So in order to read attribute data in UCINet, you have to go to File, Open, UCINet Dataset, and this time you're going to say Attribute Data. And then you select the file that has the network centrality information, and that was Paget Sent. And then we don't have to indicate anything else, so all your settings should look exactly like they do online, and you have to click OK. It appears like nothing is happening, but actually there's some stuff that is going on. Because now when we go to the Node tab, you can see that in the drop-down menu, there is information about the ID, so the names of the families, and now you can see there's information about the degree centrality, eigenvector centrality, and between a centrality. Now, Let's see how we can actually modify how this network looks. So let's start with the nodes. We go to transform. We go, I mean, to properties. Then we go to nodes. And then we go to symbols. And then we go to size. And because we want the size of the nodes to correspond to the attributes, to correspond to different network centrality measures, then we want to click on attributes with attribute base. Now this window is going to pop up. Here we want to select the, the attribute, the characteristic by which the size of the network is going to be defined. Let's choose degree centrality. Then you click Apply. And you can see how the size of the nodes now corresponds to the degree centrality, with the Medici family having the largest node and the Pucci family having the smallest size node. Now, for fun, we can click Eigenvector Centrality. Click Apply. And now you can see how the sizes of the nodes are actually changing depending on the network centrality that we pick as an attribute for defining the size of the node, right? So here we choose between the centrality, the Medici family stays the largest node because we can see it's really in between the path of almost every single family uh, in, in, this, in this data set. Now let's just stick to degree centrality. Now, if you don't want to have a square, you can simply click on Nodes, Symbols, Shape, and then if you want the shape to depend on the attribute or you want the shape for all nodes to change, uh, you can select either of these options. For now, we want to change the shape of all the nodes. Here we can indicate what do we want. I prefer circles. So now the node is, we have circles as nodes and lines as lines. Now, another thing that you can actually do is change the thickness of the, of the ties or of the lines. You can change the color, you can change the style. And 
so you can basically edit uh, this network as much as you actually want. If you don't like the layout of the network, let's say you say, well, this, I don't really like how it looks, then you can go to the layout tab and you can choose different types in which the network can actually um, be presented. First of all, you can choose circle form where then all the networks actually look are positioned on the outside of the network forming some form of a circle. You can just simply choose a random layout and every time you click on random then it is just going to look differently. Uh, and you can just pretty much play with this for as much as you want and just pick whichever uh, layout you think looks most reasonable or appealing. In the end, you just have to make sure that your network is visible and that the information that you want to convey is there, just like with any other graph that you may generate um, in other statistical works. Now, if you want to save this network to include it in a report or in, in a paper, in your website or whatever, you may want to export this uh, picture. To do that, we just simply go to File, Save Diagram As, and then you can choose as MetaLife, Bitmap, or JPEG. And then you, it goes directly to the output folder, and then you can select um, the name that you want to give to it and click Save. And now we can go to our input and output folder, and you can see that the file has been generated, and you can open it as a JPEG file, and you have this network already saved. So now you know how to visualize a network, you know how to edit a network based on attributes. In this case, you learn how to edit a network using the network centralities that you computed for it. And then you also know how to change the layout and you know how to export this file into JPEG, MidMap, or MetaLife files.